Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I want to show you how to change the thermal paste in your Xbox Series S console. This is the brand new console from Microsoft and it may be recommended to replace the thermal paste that comes from factory with some more reputable thermal paste such as MX4. I use MX4 for absolutely everything and it's probably one of the best thermal paste that you can get for the money. So. We're going to start by removing the two screws on the back. So the two screws on the back are located underneath some stickers. So we're going to pry the stickers off first, trying not to damage them so as we can put them back afterwards. So there's one. And two. There we go. Okay, so next we're going to need a Torx T8 screwdriver bit. This is the TR8 security bit with the punch out for the pin in the middle. So we're going to remove these two screws. And we're going to put them to one side. Next we're going to flip the console around and slide off the bottom door. Next we're going to swap to a Torx T9 screwdriver bit. Again, the security bit TR9. And we're going to remove the black screws from the heatsink clamp. So we want to remove these with even pressure, so from corner to corner, just to stop there being any any additional pressure on the APU itself. With those four screws removed, we can change to a TR10. And remove the rest of the screws from the bottom. So the lung green screws are going to be screwing right through the chassis into the plastic cover. And you can't really get these wrong when you're putting them back together because they they only fit in certain holes. These are exactly the same screws as the Xbox One S, apart from the two back screws that we removed to get the door off. Next we can remove the component screws, these are the silver screws, these are fairly small. Again, they only really fit in certain locations, so you can't really get them mixed up. Okay, with those screws out, the way, out of the way, we can flip the console around. And I'm going to need to give this a bit of a clean because I have got some thermal paste spillage on the console. But never mind. We can remove the top plastic. And now we can focus on the additional boards. So we're going to switch back to the T9. And we're going to start by removing the power board, which is a very small board. The screw for this power board is exactly the same as the ones for the APU clamp. So you, again, you can't get them mixed up and the same for this board as well. Let's lift that off. And then we'll focus on the Bluetooth board. And that is the final screw before we can get to the components. So we'll pop that board there and then we can lift off the top frame. 
and as you can see the fan is likely going to come off with it so just give that a little wiggle that will come loose pop that to one side and then the fan just comes right off very easy to clean the fan in this so we'll just unclip that and then we can remove the power supply there we go and now we can remove the metal clip which is covering the front USB there we go with all those components out of the way we can remove the main motherboard from the console just lift it up and there we go So here we have the motherboard with the APU heatsink still attached. So we're going to flip the board around. And on this side you can see that we've got the SSD and we've got the APU X clamp. This is the same clamp as all of the rest of the consoles prior to this one. So you can remove these several ways. You can either use a butter knife or something similar. I like to use just a small flat screwdriver and put my fingers there to protect the board so I'm going to pop the screwdriver in the edge of the clamp I'm just going to slowly pry up and just pop that side off there we go so the reason we put our finger there is because if we accidentally slip there's a chance of hitting the board and we don't want to do that because that will cause damage to the internal traces on the motherboard so we're just going to pry up again on another side, give it a wiggle and it pops right off. Again the same for this side, just give it a wiggle, there we go, and the X-clamp is off. If you do end up bending the X-clamp you can replace it with one from the Xbox One X or the Xbox One S or the original Xbox One, it will fit the same. And now the heatsink should just pop right out. There we go. And as you can see, the thermal paste that's on from factory is very dry. This is the second time I've actually seen this. I tore this one down live on stream a couple of days ago. And one thing I noticed was that the thermal paste on the APU was very dry. So that one had MX4 replaced. So I thought I'd do one for this video. So what we're going to do now is just clean off the old thermal paste. So we're going to start with the heatsink. So I'm going to use just a cotton swab. And I'm just going to wipe away all of the old thermal paste. You can see it's very, very dry. It's pretty normal from what I've heard to have dry thermal paste from factory. Which is one of the reasons why you may want to replace it. And with that clean we can just wipe away the excess put the heatsink to one side and then we can do the APU itself so the APU itself is the accelerated processing unit this is the graphics chip and the CPU all in one and this is the hottest part of the board so we want to make sure that we get a nice application of thermal paste to keep it cool so we're just going to clean around the edge and as you can see again that is very very dry thermal paste should be quite quite wet and this has definitely been on for a while so we're going to clean all of this off And blow away the excess just like so and that is ready for fresh thermal paste so we're going to take some MX4 and we're going to pop a half a pea size in the middle of the chip perfect okay so now we're ready to put the heatsink back on and the heatsink can only go one way and if you take a look 
around the the Ethernet port, you'll see that it's sandwiched in there pretty good, but the the heatsink will only sit correctly one way, so you can't really get it wrong. But just for reference, we need it to line up so the cutout is directly in between the two USB ports, and that will sit properly. And then we can flip the board around. And then we can pop the X clamp back on. This is the part where you need to be extremely careful. Make sure that the heatsink is on a very flat surface because we don't want to put uneven pressure on the APU and cause damage to the solder balls because that will probably end up killing the machine. So we're going to just pop this down in place, apply a little bit of pressure to each side. And there we go, we can feel that lock in, quite satisfying, and now we're ready to reassemble the console. So we're going to start by, start the reassembly by popping the motherboard back into the chassis, making sure to line up all of those ports. And you may need to just give it a little bit of a push down to get it to lock into place, it's perfectly normal. And then we're going to get the clip for the USB port and we're going to line this back up. So the way it lines up is with the with the fold here on the bottom. And then we're just going to slide that down and back into place. Just like that. Okay, so with the clip back in line, just like that, that's going to protect the USB port from being pushed up when the console is back together. Next, we're going to pop the power supply back in. So you'll notice that the power supply connects with this connector here. And that connector there needs to line up with these two pins just here. So we're just going to push that down and lock it in. Next we'll do the fan. So we need to connect the fan up first. So pop it into its connector. And if you can't get your fingers down to do it, you may want to remove the power supply. There we go. Perfect. So that's connected back up. So we're going to sit that back in its position. And as you can see, this is only held into place with the screws from the bottom. So make sure we put all of the screws back in. We don't want to cause any unnecessary movement. And then we can line the top plate back up. So we're going to start by putting the Bluetooth board back on. And then we're going to screw that in. So we're going to swap back to a T9 screwdriver. And then we're going to take some of the black screws and screw them in. With that one done we can move around to the front and connect up the power board. Screw that in. Beautiful. And next we can connect up the Wi Fi board. And this is going to line up with the cutout around the USB. Okay, and now we can flip the console around and start screwing in the rest of the components. So we'll start with the APU. Again, we're going to keep even pressure on this by going from one corner to the other corner, just to prevent any stress on the board once again while we're reassembling the console.
perfect now we can start by screwing the silver screws in so the silver screws you're going to be able to see where these go because you can, you can usually see threads inside the screw hole and wherever you can see a thread there's going to be a silver screw so it's not hard to get these correct and anywhere which looks hollow is going to be a long green screw And with that done, we can go ahead and put the console back into the plastic housing. Right, so with that done, all we've got to do is put the green screws back in. And now we can slide the door back on. We're going to switch back to the T8 screwdriver. Finally, we'll put the screw covers back over to cover the screws up. And that's pretty much it. So, that's how we change the thermal paste on the Xbox Series S. That's going to be it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. As always, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any future tutorials. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.